Hi, so this is going to be a recording, but I will be in a chat with you. So pretend that this is live, okay? And a couple of reasons that I want to do that because first is that hopefully I'll be able to focus on painting just a little bit more. And plus I'm able to paint early in the morning instead of late at night. Hopefully I'll do a better painting this way. So this is right now, I think, 5.30 a.m. in the morning. A little bit too early for a lot of people, but I decided to just wake up early and do a painting before everybody else in my family's wake up. So anyways, hopefully you will enjoy this painting and hopefully it will turn out good. So the picture that we're painting from is this picture that right here. Now this is Horseshoe Bay. I took this photo a while back last time I visited Canada. Lovely place. And this is the original photo, the one in the middle. So I took this photo and because during that time I didn't know how am I going to compose this into a painting, but I do want to paint it. So originally I just took that photo and include just a little bit more and after playing around with it a little bit I decided to crop it and make it a portrait orientation so it become the one that we see right now like these so hopefully that we can have just enough visual interest for us to make a painting now the visual interest for me definitely is the that red roof there that's a very interesting color that just kind of pops in front of that, in front of everything else. Everything else is kind of just green, you know, bluish gray and, and white. So that roof is definitely something that pops out. So by cropping the image, you get to see that a little bit more. Okay. So I already did a value study yesterday just to get the feel of it now so before we start the painting I'm just gonna go through how I kinda connect the shape and everything together so we have our background which is the mountain and that value connects to the back of the truck and the dark side of the house and then the gangway here and from the gangway we connect that to the reflection now this reflection is the reflection of the mountain and this reflection is reflection of this distant mountain. So this shape connects to the reflection here. Okay, so everything kind of connects to together. There's a little bit of separations by the white here, but there's mostly separate. Uh, there's mostly connected. So the value of these two mountains and these two reflection will be slightly different, but we'll try to keep it as simple as possible so the initial study value study looks promising I like it so hopefully that will be able to pull that off in our final painting so let's just get started okay so we'll start with the drawing now the big shape first so first I want to establish the position of the house and everything else so we got our house let's say somewhere around here I just gonna do like a box so maybe somewhere here we don't need to commit anything just yet just get your pencil moving Get your mind, get your brain thinking. Okay. There's a gangway, something like that. Okay, and uh, there's a cruise ship in the back. I think it's a cruise ship. It's not a huge cruise ship, but I do think it's a cruise ship. And 
I think the reason I include that is because just to have a little bit more visual interest in the background or we'll keep it simple. I mean, we can probably take it out and still be fine, but I just decided to include that. Okay, okay so the mountain here. Okay, and uh, I really love the depths the depths of uh, the mountain in the background. I think that looks really cool. Okay. All right, so, and there's a pole here. I think that this pole is quite important. It really gives us some sense of depths. So that pole also connects to the gangway. And uh, okay, so now we can start to draw a little bit more carefully. Now again, the, the cruise ship in the back, you know, we don't have to be particularly careful with it, but I think just mostly a silhouette is important to try to get that. Okay. We can lower the water level a little bit. So I know this is not live, but I will be in a chat with you, talking with you. If you guys have any question or just want to chat something random, we should be able to do that. Okay, now the roof of this. Okay, just make sure you make the roof a little bit flatter so that house looks a little bit wider looks better in terms of the shape okay. try to get it a little bit straighter okay and there's a truck I don't know, it kind of looks like an ambulance because it's some red stripe on it, but I'm not quite sure. It's another one here. Just roughly, like, I'm not you know, copying everything one to one in terms of the position and everything doesn't really matter. Okay, so the here's the gangway. It's overlapping the house and stuff a little bit. Okay, so I'm not going to measure every single distance between the you know, the bars and everything. Okay, something like that will do. It's, it's not the... You know, we'll try to stay loose on this. Okay, and this... Tall poles. Wooden poles for the gangway. Now, there's a... There's a stair. It's a staircase from the lower gangway to, to the upper one to this houses and stuff. I decided not to include that just because I think it's competing with the white boat here and I don't want that. So here I am going to draw the boat. So, something like these. Not going to be go big on perspective here, but try to make sure your 
Your shape and silhouette looks good. There's the bottom of the boat. Cover, roof, whatever. Okay, the pointy front goes way to the back. Okay, and this will connect to the gangway to the side here. And then it's just mostly going to be quite dark. So if I do the staircase here, that shape is going to compete with the boat. So that's not something that I want. Okay, so so another pole here, and uh, another boat here. This one will be a little bit simpler. Just gonna loosely indicate that in. It's another gangway here. Now there's a boat here that is about to take off. I decided to move it somewhere all the way back here just to you know, have a little bit, make it into like a background element instead of something here because I do want this to have a nice connection. So I don't want to break the connection with something in the in the middle. Okay. Another boat here, just going to be very loose here. So that's the initial drawing. Now Okay, there's some like I'm not sure what that is some sort of pole here antenna whatever I might need to come back with squash with that because that's that's very that's actually very very thin yeah and I might want to move it a little bit more in the middle so I'll probably hide that behind the house here I don't want something dead in the center okay a couple stuff, whatever we can we can deal with those later. Now I'll loosely indicate the reflection. So somewhere something like this, and the reflection of the boat is going to be white. So that will be something that we need to kind of paint around, and reflection of the this pose down to the house the house is also white with the kind of reddish reflection of the of the roof so those are all things that we need to make sure that we get that in that's what makes this painting interesting and cool is the reflection of the of the water okay so let me take a sip of coffee okay something I get to have in the morning not so much in the late night so okay so let's just get started take a one last look and um, let me actually clean up some of the, the pencil line first. It's a little bit messy, some of the areas. Okay, so I'm going to wet, probably not the entire painting, but definitely a couple areas that I want a little bit more light. So would be interesting to have so some areas in the reflection so I'm looking at the painting I want some light for the 
the red roof definitely a lot of it i'll probably just leave it white like the house itself and everything and i'll wet a little bit in the background but mostly i think mostly it's just going to i'm going to paint over it anyways so not a huge deal I'm just gonna get the paper pre-wetted a little bit. Hopefully it will give me a little bit more time to to play with it. Okay, not a lot, which is fine. So the first thing first, before any of this gets dry, I want to have the, the roof, the roof in. So a little bit of red and orange. I add a little bit of carmine actually just to get that little hint of pink. Okay, so there we go. Okay. Okay, so something like that. Okay. It'll bloom out a little bit, totally fine, because the background is going to be covered with mountain. And then down here where the reflection is. I loosely indicate that the you know the roof is going to be somewhere here, so you know, just the end is fine. When it's dry, it's going to fade into almost nothing, anyways. Not into nothing, just going to be a lot lighter. And also, okay, I'm gonna wet this area a little bit, so. There's a, I think, I don't know if it's a lifeboat or something, but something orange behind all the bars here in the gangway. So I think I will paint that in just because it's a little hint of color that's really going to help this piece quite a bit. So, yeah, just something like that. Okay. The rest of it, I think we can, the rest of it, I think we can just paint. that edge here okay so let's start with our background I'll take a big brush and start from the top it's not a lot of blue sky in this piece so I'm just going to start with a little bit of you know, cobalt blue Just neutralize that. Use a little bit of orange here just to make it a little bit more gray. And I'll premix some color actually. So now use cobalt, turquoise. I'll add a little bit of burnt umber, get that dirt. Cool looking green. Sort of those earth tone green here. Okay, so none of the green is really warm in the background there. Okay, so it's sort of like an overcast day, but with a little peak of sun. That's why you see the boat and the house is nicely lit, but the background is not. Probably something quite typical in the Pacific Northwest when you got heavy clouds, but sometimes there's some peaking through. So okay. So, I think this sh should be enough for us to work with. Okay, so we're just gonna start with the sky. Now, the mountain we can paint in a little bit later. So, this initial first wash. We'll just get the atmosphere and some of the color in. So, you know, don't don't get too ridiculously careful with it. It's really not the point. Okay. Now here we can start to have a little bit of the color in. Yeah, it's very transparent. Okay, just you know, a little bit of the the color in here. Okay.
Get a little bit warmer and stuff. Okay. You grab another brush. On the mountains in the back here. While this is still wet, I just want to kind of paint that in. Okay. Nice single stroke and just get that edge in. I want the edge of this mountain to be a little bit more kind of misty instead of something very, very defined like the one in the photo. The one in the photo is nice, but I want to have a little bit more depth in my painting. So make it just a little bit more misty. So do that wet onto wet, I think is quite important. Okay, and I just continue this wash down. switch to a smaller brush let me see if I can actually paint around those white poles see if I can pull that off no. I mean if you have like a masking fluid pen pen or something I think that will be quite useful here in this case but it's always different to paint negative and positive shape differently. Okay, so here in the background, let me try to paint around the the cruise ship. Now, don't slow down too much. The paint is drying rapidly. Now, the first wash is quite wet, so hopefully you got a little bit more time. Okay, here I'm trying to paint around this light again okay try to stay loose while preserve that highlight okay I bring that underneath we definitely want to keep this white keep the truck white Oops, this coming in a little bit. The water kind of sip in here, so not a big deal. I think we can just kind of paint this back in with a little bit thicker mixture. No biggie, okay? And then down here. And now the reflection here is a reflection of the sky. So, whoops. So I'm just gonna grab the sky color and now I want to keep a little bit of the you know, of the line here, so I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to touch what I already have and just paint around that. Okay, paint around this boat here and there's also some sort of like a, some sort of a, I don't know, game wave, but like a white pipe here or something. I'm just going to paint that. This pole we can just paint over because it's darker me so most of the most of the things here is going to be darker so we can just paint over that it was not a lot of problem you know preserve some light for the bow this two boat here but we don't have to be too careful with it Okay, the rest of the Okay, the 
vote here. Okay, we'll preserve some highlight on the top here. The bottom we can just paint over. Now we can give we can give the gangway and stuff a little bit of the tone already, I think. So just give it a little bit of the you know, those wood colors here. Okay, now the rest of it, I'm just going to just wrap that wash. Just get that wash over with. Okay, we're not worried about other reflection and stuff. Okay, the red is just there because I want to preserve the color. Rest of it is really not that important. Okay, so get that. So just get this wash down all the way to the bottom. Okay. So it seems like it's a little bit complicated, but not too bad just focus i think and i think it's in the morning so hopefully i got sharper focus than in the afternoon so i want to do a little bit of wet on wet ripples so I just mix cobalt turquoise with a little bit of cobalt blue get some nice deep colors okay so if you look at this okay, you just paint that in while it is still sort of moist and just kind of lightly go through that a couple times a little bit more turquoise So you got a little bit of soft ripple here. Now I'm going to paint some sharp reflections for sure. But just a little bit of this and then just start to get the surface going. Okay, so that's our first wash. Again, just light and atmosphere. Okay, so the background is still a little bit wet, but I do think I can start already if I have uh, wet enough, if I have dry enough mixture. So let's do that actually. Try to pre mix my pile while it is drying. So. By the time I finish mixing the piles, probably going to be dry enough anyways. So let's start with the background mountain. I actually like how fade back this is, so I want to keep most of that. Now, this mountain, I do need to make it darker. Again, study this between this and our value study. Okay, this is definitely darker than the sky. And this too, just I'm trying to make it simpler here, but in here, this mountain needs to be a little bit darker. Okay, so. All right, add a little bit blue here. Okay. So let me see if I can, there we go. Still a little bit softening, which is great. Still a little bit moist. So here, just, there we go. Okay, so a little bit bluer and a little bit softer here. Okay, keep it simple, okay? And now I'm grabbing a little bit warmer green here. There's ton of evergreen trees and stuff in the back. Okay, so deal with those later let me 
clean and dry my brush and soften a little bit of those edge right here so it kind of blends into the background a little bit this is already quite dry so I can use like a damp brush and soften the edge into the background here okay I will actually you know, spray a little bit of mist you know, stay far back though don't blast really close okay Okay, I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. I'm still a little bit sick, but I'm almost fully recovered, so that's why I'm doing this. I might still cough just a little bit. If I do that, I'll mute the microphone so you guys don't get surprised. Okay. Now I do think that we need to start to give it a little bit more volume. Uh, with the evergreen tree and stuff. So I'll add more burnt umber. It's a little bit of turquoise. I think I'll add a little bit uh, a lizard and crimson just to. It's actually too much. A little bit of lizard and crimson just to make this a little bit darker. Okay, and I can. Just do that while it is still wet and moist. Just connect this wash down here. Okay, and then now it's a very important that I start to very important that I start to paint around the roof. Okay, this is the now is the time for me to really define that roof shape. Okay, so here, okay, check the shape, just go across like that, can even go a little bit darker if I need to, okay, and then let's make this, okay. Okay, these are drying quite rapidly, so need to hurry up and finish that wash here. Now, one thing that you do want to watch out for is that because we all want to finish the wash quickly, and you start to tend to want to add more water to your mixture, uh, try not to do that. Make sure the consistency is right because if you add too much water now It's going to sit back into What you already have and that's not going to look good The Adding water is going to help the paint to flow a little bit better, but you need to also considering the amount of moisture you already have on the on the paper. So if you make it too too watery, it's going to mess up the wash. And also it's going to be too transparent, which is not something you want right now. Okay, so paint around that cruise ship a little bit. Adjusting the, the shape. Okay, there's some stuff poking out of the, the cruise ship. I don't know if that's balcony or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we finished the mountain here. And while it is still a little bit moist, we can definitely play around with it a little bit. So it makes a nice dry mixture and just get a little bit more wet onto wet here, okay? So we're painting negative shape. Now these are all... Now when I say negative shape, I mean like dark shape uh, in all these evergreen trees. 
which is a little bit tough because evergreen tree has this distinct shape. And, uh, sorry. So, a lot of this just hints of, I'm, look, I'm just looking at the shadow shape and try to interpret that with my brush stroke. That's about it. Okay, add a little bit more blue as we go up. So a little bit more, a little bit cooler. Okay, so not everywhere, just a couple areas. We just, all we want, really need is some variation and textures. Okay. Okay, I think this is this is this is good enough. We don't need to really go into there as in look, this is all evergreen trees. This is fine. In context, it's going to work okay. Okay. At some point it's just going to be enough enough information. I am in process of making a video about visual language, which is the key the absolute key for a loose painting. So stay tuned on that. Because like so many videos talk about how to make a loose painting and they all, to me, they all scratching the surface. Like, like yeah, holding your brush backward a little bit, or use, you know, more bold color and whatever. Those are all techniques that you can use, apply, and those are valid suggestions. But to me, the real key to a good loose painting is the sense and the knowledge of visual language. To me, that's the most important thing. Because okay. so, without it and you just apply to those techniques, that's not going to help you to have a good loose painting. Okay, so I think this is good enough. Okay, that shape looks a little bit weird, so I'm trying to adjust it a little bit. But yeah, I think there's, you know, this is enough wet on wet work here. quite like where this is going so far. We get that little sense of depth here with a couple of trees. Okay. You see I don't dig my brush back into the water bucket much. Okay, I want to keep I want to keep this nice and, and dry so that when I paint on this which is, has a little bit of moisture, it has just a little bit of softness to have that okay. Adding a little bit blue here. Now, you know, just a little bit of. I'm not even gonna call it scrubbing, just a little short brush stroke to indicate a bunch of trees. Okay. Okay, I think we can. Take out a little bit of highlights here so that it doesn't jump too much. Not highlight, just light. Okay. Alright. Now I'll play enough with the background. Let's continue down. Now I'm not going to edit this video too much, but you know, if there's something goes terribly wrong, I can still have a chance to do that, which is the nice thing if I am doing recording instead of completely live. Okay, now let's connect the background into the back of the truck here. We'll try to move away from the green, so a little bit more blue. Ok, 
Okay. I need a little bit more light here. Let me see if I can press that out. Okay, that works. Okay, if you accidentally paint into some area that you not intended to while it is still wet, just grab a paper towel, tissue, whatever, blot it out. Okay, so the background have that connect to the housing here. Let me change a brush actually. Let me change it into uh, Perla. It's a little bit more rigid, has a sharper point, probably a little bit easier for me to control. Okay. Now I will try to leave a little bit of the highlight for the handrail, but honestly, we don't really need to be super careful with that. Just a little hint. Fine. Even if you paint it over, it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, I did it again. Oops. Okay, blot that out. Okay, a little bit of blue, and I'll just grab this shape over underneath the roof line here to get a little bit of the shadow in. Okay, and that shadow also connect to the background, so it's fine, we can just do that. Okay, we'll actually lower this a little bit, lower this mountain line, this water, just a little bit. Okay, let's add a little bit more blue in here. Wet onto wet. Okay, so now we'll continue the dark shape down with just a little bit more warm colors. Actually, we should make it a little bit more brown. I'm gonna add some burnt sienna. Get those wood color in. Okay, so okay, those handrail up here is poking out a little bit, and uh, there's actually like a pole here. I'm just gonna paint that in, and. Uh, and again, I'm not going to measure all the distance of the poles in perspective. It's just not, not what this painting is about. Okay, somewhere close is fine. Even if it's a little bit off, there's so many poles, it doesn't really matter. Okay. okay, just uh, keep it loose. And as long as it looks like handrails and poles, it's, it's fine. Okay. Can we just continue this down? Okay. We're gonna come back in with another wash just to make the couple area that's actually quite a bit darker. So this is just our our second wash. So we can leave some stuff a little bit lighter and stuff is fine. The main thing is to try to establish that shape connection. Okay, so we can have this come down a little bit. 
¿sí? I need more mixture. Mix more colors. We're covering quite a big area here. Okay. And, uh, okay. Just leave a little bit of random light and stuff. Now be careful, cut around this gangway here. And the boat, of course. Okay. Cut around the boat, preserve that light. Okay, this bunch of stuff here is very easy to get sucked into all the details. Okay, squint your eyes a little bit, see what's really there when you squint your eyes and just paint that. Paint what you see when you squint your eyes is what I mean. Okay, a little bit of dark shadow underneath. Okay, we'll, we'll definitely come back and add some darkness here. Right now, it's just a single value. But we already start to establish some, some value already. underneath the boat okay we get that shadow in a little bit cooler okay don't don't use a brown color anymore and watch out for the shape okay now let me clean my brush and I'm gonna use almost dry brush just to bring this over like these get a little bit of transition going on okay um, ping some window in and I'm just gonna grab some of this brown color because there's some stuff that's we're seeing through this Just a little bit of this. Okay. okay, now let's start to. Not sure if I should work on a reflection now. Let's get that pole and a little bit of background in first. Okay. I'm just gonna mix a neutral gray with cobalt blue and burnt umber. Just give a little bit of stuff for this cruise ship in the back. Very subtle though, a couple of windows, tiny little bit of windows here. So little hints of orange umbrella or something, whatever, owning, I am not quite sure, okay. Okay, just get a little bit hints of value and form. Okay, just grab some random colors. Some hints of details here. <laughs> Sorry, there's a f fly of some sort. Just 
It's close to summer, so the bugs start coming out. There was like a huge spider in my garage, my garage studio the other day. It freaked me out. And there's some, and they start to have some like little flies and stuff. It's not too bad though. Okay. Okay, just a little hint something back in the stu in the in the background is fine. Now I'm going to paint that pole here. Now the color of that pole is quite warm actually. So burn sienna, a little bit of orange, and I'm just going to paint that in here. Try to give it a nice clean wash here. Down here becomes a little bit more. It's kind of white, but it's dirty, so I'm just grabbing a dirty color here. And that connects to the gangway and stuff over here. So, you know, something like this, just a little hint of something. And then we can connect that to. You know, the shadow, the dark side of the underneath of this boat. Again, very, very loose and subtle. Okay. Just a little hint of something is really not that big of a deal here. Okay, now it's the time for me to do this huge reflection. So we really need to have a good amount of mixture here. So let me make sure I do that. Now most of these colors I can, I can continue use that. I just need to add quite a bit more. turquoise, some burnt umber, actually very close to the color in the back here because it is the reflection of the mountain. We can just make it a little bit darker, a little bit cooler. Okay. Now also the reflection of this mountain back here, which is a little bit cooler, a little bit lighter too. Okay. So hopefully this will do. Okay, let me do a, do a quick test here. See if the color turns out all right. Okay, that looks fine. So let's start here. Now it's quite a bit darker up here, so I'll mix a dark value first. Now there's a shadow here and that's reflecting, reflecting down here. So I'll just paint around it for now. I'll add the color later. Okay, so we're really trying to aim for finish this in one go, so we can't afford to, to mock around too much. Okay, now we go into that lighter blue color. Okay, now I already sort of indicate where I want the reflection to be, so try to focus on what you already indicated instead of looking at the photo and get all confused with all the visual information you got because it's overwhelmingly just too much information from the photo 
for you to work with. So be very quick. Just get those shape in. Okay. Okay. That will connect into the darker area. Okay, reload your brush a little bit. So make sure you have enough mixture. If you don't, then you need to mix those mixtures in the fly, which is fine if that's you know if you have confidence to do that, that's okay. But at least have a good amount of paint to to start off with. Okay, here we going to leave the boat a little bit here. Okay, so just a couple areas here. Well, I want to add that orange down here a little bit, so something like that. And oh, whoops, I painted a little bit too much. No, I need to preserve some of the white for the house. Okay, now it's the time to paint the big reflection behind the mountain here. Okay, need a little bit more water just to keep the flowing a little bit more. So I need to mix a little bit more mixtures. I just said you should have more premix mixture and I just break my own rule. Sorry. Not because I have confidence that I have enough mixture, just that. It's a good reminder for myself too. Okay, so I have some of the repo cut into this color. Okay, we want to we want to cover up some of the reflection here and then in the house. We just leave that color there because we, we want some reflection of the color. still wet let me get some of this colors of the pole in yeah just like that wet onto wet okay. let the color blend is fine this is a reflection doesn't really matter okay and down here, let's just continue this. It's almost dry, so I need to speed up. And this is quite stressful, but just make sure you feed it enough paint and the moisture and it should be able to continue. Just gonna use a bigger brush for this. OK, 
Okay, finish this up. Bring some of this ripple up just to give it a little bit more variety and a little bit more textures and for the rest of it you can just so we still manage to keep a little bit of the, the house here Okay, so we got the reflection of the background in the house. I'll probably need to Oops. Probably need to add a little bit more here. The reflection because what happens I was looking at a photo and there's a reflection of that white staircase which we don't have that here so I shouldn't need to keep that I don't know why I did that so okay this should be dry enough for me to just paint on it okay so I'm just gonna So this boat down here. Well, let's cast a shadow here. And then that shadow has the reflection down here. And shadow also goes all the way here. Let me actually make this a lot darker. Just neutral tint. So this shadow has reflection too, and this reflection down here connect with the rest of the whatever those are. So I try to mirror what I have up here. Now we got a nice reflection of this. Of the boat here. Okay. And a few more here reflecting this dark side of the house. Okay, just make sure this is dry enough for you to do that, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna explode. Okay. Okay, we are well on our way, I think, I hope. So let's check back with our value study again. Now, all that's left is some dark areas underneath the gangway here the windows and stuff and of course we already did this part while when we're on it and we can darken some of this area as well so looking at our painting we're, we're, we're well on our way and we can probably do a little bit of glazing on some of the water service here as well but i do like how clean that is so i might not do much of that okay So first of all, I do like how clean that is. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of shadow down here. Maybe 
little hints of reflection that's it okay that's this tiny boat as far as we we should do and now let's start to give some dark details I'm just I'm not bothering going to clean my palette is most of the color is going to be quite similar okay so underneath the roof here let me see if I can zoom in, in a little bit okay color looks a little bit different uh, as always I'll try to calibrate that later but just a dark shadow here okay get that in that is quite important give us a lot more depth here Okay, so this nice dark shadow here and then underneath here is some door or windows whatever those you know whatever these are and we got uh, some windows on the side starting from the top and uh, we actually have a little bit of that roof color there which is kind of nice so I add that in it's almost invisible now okay. that's fine I tried okay and then Okay, so just neutral tint and I would darken whatever make sure that we have here for the woods and we're just starting to add some more dark underneath here okay can keep it loose nice and loose we just want a little bit of hints of form and structures okay so just if you paint a little bit dark right next to what we already have here now it'll start to read as a form okay so that's what visual language is about just a little hint of structure and form with a little bit of information that you got that you give i mean okay and then we can start to add some more dark down here <clears throat> okay, we leave a little bit too much highlight here so I'm just gonna paint this one over and this is dry enough so I'm actually going to extend that down into reflection okay so we keep them connected the gangway and the shadow of the gangway down there and then we'll turn that into reflections now it's very tricky how to give it just enough information but don't overdo it okay so back here i'm just gonna go straight down like that i don't need every single reflection to have that crazy ripple So there's a lot of decision making every single brushstroke that you make. So that's why I think when you know, if you're doing a painting after that, you should be sort of exhausted because you're constantly making decisions and trying to, you know, make the best of your judgment for what you need to do. So hopefully painting in the morning will have a better result for me than painting late at night where I am already kind of tired throughout the day. So hopefully this will, you know, give me a good start if this is the first thing I do in a day. It's also the sign that I'm aging. I am not 
good being a night owl anymore. I mean, I'm fine if I'm just like in a chat talking with you right now. Or maybe like do something a little bit more relaxing like watching a movie or whatever, but not for painting, I'm afraid. Okay, we need a little bit more dark here. See, like down here, there's just a bunch of dark shapes. So, as long as you keep your wash clean and your value in check, this is not that hard to do here. And especially we skip that white staircase. For good reason, I don't want this to compete with the boat. So. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so let me give it a little bit of the detail over here. Okay, so the, the boat in here, we need to darken that a little bit so the white will pop. A little bit more. <laughs> okay, let's just give the know, give a little bit more detail. So it looks a little bit more finished. Right now, it still look a little bit rough. But mostly, we just want to preserve that light. You know, that white boat getting lit by the sun, nice and bright. Okay. And we probably can come back and erase some of the, the pencil line to just make it a little bit cleaner. Since we leave it white, we didn't paint over that. Okay, a little bit of red stripe on the boat. Okay, tiny hints of, oops, tiny hints of detail here. little hints of you know different poles and stick whatever I think that looks sophisticated enough I mean, let's not overdo it and okay the, the truck okay let's relax a bit doing something a little bit easier and there's a truck so there's like a window in the back and another window here and the side windshield. <clears throat> the mixture is actually quite wet. You can see the big puddle here. Sorry if my head is in the way. I'm changing a setup and I'm still waiting for something that will move the camera a little bit more to the front so hopefully it won't get my head in there because if i get in closer you're gonna see my head here and it's not fun <clears throat> okay so there's like a pipe here so I'll just give a hint of that Again, just keep it simple and loose. These are the backgrounds, so we don't need to do too much here. And here, oops, here is the boat. We add a little bit more 
dark detailing here. We should be good to go. We're almost at the end. Okay, so it's dark down here and we turn that into a little bit of reflection. So down here as well, we'll make a reflection here. And that connects to the reflection of the pole. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's add a dark side of this pole here. Just to give it a little bit more form. And that reflection will add some reflection down here as well. So we have a little bit of form value differences here and this will bring the reflection down here. Okay, so hopefully that, hopefully this works. Okay, now let's start to darken this reflection a little bit. All of this should be dry enough. Okay, so I think it's almost morning time. What time is it? It's almost seven. So I see my kids are starting to wake up, which is a good time to wrap up this painting. And since we're watching the recording, you guys are probably pretty tired as well. Okay, do a test here. Okay, nice and dark. So I'll bring some of these to the side here. We can actually connect that to the reflection of these little boats here. Okay, so here, let's darken this. So we just give it another layer of value here. Now, this part, I want to be a little bit careful to preserve some of the, the light here. So I will connect to the dark side of the, the pole here. Okay, however, the other side, I will try to be careful and maintain maintain the shape of the reflection of the pole okay so there we go that's the best I can do okay I'm just gonna have them connected okay Paint those in a little bit. A little bit more paint here. Okay. 
Okay, let's finish this up. So we just darken this whole reflection here, which is quite nice. I like I like it. The water feels a lot more a lot deeper. And it just look a little bit more unified as well. <clears throat> okay, let me grab some blue and just give the background a little bit of... It's a little bit too plain, so I'm just gonna... Yeah. Couple of these two give it a little bit of a little bit of hints of water and stuff, but this is pretty much it. Okay, and now we just add Tiny little hints of details that will hopefully enhance the whole, whole experience. So right here, I'll add a little detail of the, the pole here, which I do see it in the photo. So just a little bit, we don't need to do much. And a little bit here as well. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let me grab my smaller brush here. We're almost done, okay, I promise. I know we're tired. Okay. I mean, if this runs too long, I can always edit it down. It's fine. Okay, there's just some poles here. Which is what reflects down here. So I mean, there's some white things here and there, but I'll just keep it simple. Just make it. I don't know if it's an electric pole or just like poles for the sign, but whatever. But you know, it's a little bit of verticality, which is kind of nice. Keep this one behind a truck. <clears throat> Last but not least, just add a little bit more color to this ambulance here. Couldn't do that when I was doing the window because that was still wet. I don't want them to blend. So here we go. I don't know why there's an ambulance there, but. I'll make this orange I'll make this red a little bit darker because it's in the shadow. Okay, I think this is pretty much it. Let's compare that to our value study. Okay, so we definitely get the point across. Got our reflection, got our overall general shape here as well. And we did preserve some more boat reflection and a house I'm quite happy with that and a little bit of this pole reflection as well things that I'm quite happy about so hopefully this is entertaining and helpful for you just adding a little bit of thing here I think it's a little bit too much too much white Okay, so hope you enjoy that and I might touch up a little bit later. I'm not quite sure, but I, I think this is pretty much what I wanted to do here. And then the color is a little bit washed out. So I will take a photo and just share it at the end of the video. 
and hopefully you guys were able to see that a little bit better. I will make this reference photo, one down here, available for you to download. So if you want to try that, feel free to do that. It's, I will say it's a little bit complicated scenery. So you can, you know, so it's definitely a little bit of challenge for me as well. So, okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. And hopefully you enjoy this format as I stay in the chat with you. I will see you guys again next time. Bye.